as you guys know, over the last three weeks, we've been going through the book of John, and I have made videos for you guys to be able to read the book of John. That way, when you came to the channel, you were able to read that with a beautiful song behind it, because I don't know if a lot of people do this. I personally do. If I'm ever going to read my Bible, I always want to listen to that divine music that I included um, in those videos, in those readings that you guys were able to read. Um, the thing is, for me in particular, the most profound verse in the entire chapter of John, the first chapter of John, is the first one where he states, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That is so profound. And pro. It, it's profound for you and I to be able to read that. Because what that means for you and I is that this was in the beginning. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word, and the word was with God. And the word was God. The thing a lot of people I don't think understand and they don't realize is that the Bible is truly alive. It is a living word. It's a living Bible. It literally has life in it. Who's the life? Who's what makes this what makes this book right here a living book? A living Bible. The Word of God. The breath of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the, and the Word was with God. This is God with us. Let's go to... You don't have to go there with me. I'll go to this for you. But we are going to go to John chapter 17 in verse 5 and watch what it says. And this is in red. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Roman, Acts. 17 5. This is in red. A lot of John is actually in red. If you guys are looking at this, oh, wow, this is in red. So we're going to learn a lot in this book of John here. So chapter 17, verse 5, is a clarification of chapter 1, verse 1 in John. And it states, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. <laughs> I'll, I will be right back. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going through John, through John 17, 5. And due to what I have at the bottom of every page, I'm checking to see if there's more, more clarification and more light to be shed on that first chapter and, and verse. And there actually is uh, chapter 1, verse 1 is clarified by John chapter 17, verse 5, and chapter 17, verse 5 is clarified with John 17, 24, which states, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest, lovest me before the foundation of the world. Now let's go on to that, which is also clarified in John 12, 26. Two, two awesome 
God to clarify this all the time. He clarifies everything for us. There's nothing he, he never, God doesn't take shortcuts. God is not a God of shortcuts. He goes all the way, 100%, every single time. He never fails. He's a 100% God. He doesn't do a 50-50 thing. And he won't take anyone that does 50-50. You have to be 100% in him or don't, just don't try. And I will teach, I will do a sermon on that really soon, um, on why I say that. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. What that says right there, and I'm going a, I'm to a digest that right now. For you guys and with you guys what that says right there is if you serve Jesus body mind and spirit but body mind heart spirit and soul and body soul and spirit if you serve Jesus in your in body soul and spirit God will honor you. And again, it has to be 100%. It can't be 50-50. You can't be wishy-washy with your relationship with Jesus. You have to go all in. And you have to just tell the flesh to take a hike because your spirit man has a destination and hell's not worth the pleasures of this world. You have to serve God 100% or or things can creep in. You know, I went through a very dark time last year in my life where I didn't feel the presence of God anymore. I didn't hear his voice anymore. And it scared every piece of me, every ounce of me. My my heart was fearful. My, my soul was fearful. My spirit was fearful. I, in all myself, was fearful of what was going on. But also at the same time, I had to realize he's right here. Um, but I definitely wasn't giving God 100% and I'm not completely doing that right now either. But I am really working on getting back to being 100% with God and canceling out the distractions of the world. It literally took one video to go down that dark and narrow and dangerous path that took me for a loop. It was literally a tornado that came through in one video and just spiritually wrecked me. So, this is verse 26 in chapter 12. It's also clarified, and it's clarified in 14.3. And if I go and prepare, if, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I, I will come again and receive you unto myself. There, that where I am, there you may be also. That right there is the rapture. That right there is... That's the rapture. Um, that's the rapture and the second coming. He's talking about both of them in one. And if you guys don't know that those are two separate events, go back to the old channel, rewatch those videos, and I describe in detail that those are two different events. The second coming will come after the rapture. And it will also come after the tribulation. Go over to that other channel of the other ministry and watch that. Because, yeah, I, I actually, after we're done with John, I'm going to go back over that and go more in detail, more in depth, go farther into it than I did before. I need to explain it more. There's some announcements at the end of this video, so don't immediately click off after I'm done with this sermon. Just stay around for a little bit. All right, so 
with the clarifications of those verses that clarify chapter 1, verse 1. And this is why I say it's so, that is such a profound verse, is because it is literally talking about eternity. It is literally the definition of eternity. Remember, this is the beginning of all knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. This is knowledge. They are two the things talked about. I, I don't know if it's on this channel or the other one, but again, a very important sermon and I might go back over that with you guys but I believe then that in verse 1 of chapter 1 of John he was telling us of the second coming the rapture now and knowledge all in one How do I accumulate that? He basically in chapter one, verse one of John, he's telling us everything there is in the word, everything there is in the Bible. He's he's telling us to get into the word, digest it, and we think he digested it enough. Get back in there and digest it some more. Um, if I was, if I was, people, I would read this from cover to cover, and I would try to do it four times a year. Because that's how serious this is. You ne- you and I never signed a contract with the devil to where we had to go to hell. There's no. There's nothing saying we are mandated to go to hell. That's why the bread of life came to to the earth. Because we're not mandated to go to hell. We did sign that contract in the garden. But Jesus broke it. Tore it in half. Then he died on that cross. And he took that contract right out of Satan's hand and put it in the shredder. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. I don't know about you guys. But in that verse, I hear love. I hear grace. I hear mercy. In that verse, and there's more clarification to those verses. We can go on and on and on and on for quite a few more verses. Just off that one verse that has several clarifications and goes down a very long line of scripture. Actually, it goes down all that scripture. See all those pages right there? That verse describes all of this. Tells us that even before there was any earth, before there was any earth, he knew what Sam was going to do. He knew what we were going to say, do, what actions would be committed, what actions would take place. He knew everything. That would take place in the earth. But he wanted a family. And he's going to have his family. He was so hungry for a family. He was willing to die on a cross. To bear unimaginable suffering. That's the love of God. That's the only way you can describe it. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So for all those people 
who continuously say, Oh, I don't believe the word. I don't believe the word, but I believe in God. Well, you don't believe in God if you don't believe the word. Because the, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So you don't believe in God unless you believe in the word. You don't have knowledge unless you believe in the word. L and all the contents in it. You don't have wisdom unless you have the fear of the Lord. And I've talked about that also. We've touched on that also. There's actually been a teaching on that on one of the two channels. The fear of the Lord doesn't mean to cower down. The fear of the Lord means you understand who he is and the power he has. And ultimately, the fear of the Lord means you understand without him. There is no heaven. Without him, there is damnation. That is the fear of the Lord. That's when you start to begin to have wisdom. Not a moment before. Man thinks knowledge and wisdom are the same thing. The Bible says something completely different. And if the, and if the Bible says something completely different, that means God says something completely different. Because why? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You understand how profound it is that we literally have God right here? Do you understand how crazy that is, how amazing that is, that we have God right here? We don't even have to go searching for him. All we gotta do is read this. He'll come. You read this. He'll come. That's why chapter one, verse one of the book of John is so profound. Because no matter what people argue, the Word was God from the beginning. And whatever this Bible says, by the way, the only version I Recommend and the only version I will allow myself to read because I truly believe it is still the fruit that he gave us. That's the only version of the Bible I believe is unadulterated. I believe that is as, as true to the Original Bible as there is. But you can't believe in Jesus unless you believe in that Bible. You can't believe in the Holy Spirit unless you, you believe this. You can't believe in God unless you believe this. You don't have knowledge unless you've read this. You don't have wisdom unless you've read this and you understand how to Obtain wisdom. And no school will give you knowledge. No school will give you wisdom. Because most schools do not carry these. They don't recommend them. They don't even want you to read them. They talk about down about them and blaspheme the Bible. If you didn't read the Bible, how would you know about Jesus? About what? By word of mouth? No, you got you. You have to read this. This is the bread of life.
This is the light. This is the salvation. This is the covering of our sins. Without this, you and I aren't entering heaven. And the first chapter in John, in the very first verse, is pretty clear on that. Without this, without this, you and I are damned. And John explains that. The first chapter in the very first verse of the book of John explains it. I could tell you about Jesus all day. I could minister to you all day. But unless you dive into the Bible, and unless you try to digest it for yourself, me speaking it to you does some good. But you need a more intimate time in the Word is God. Get away from the distractions, get away from the noise, go to your room, wherever you have to, open that Bible and start reading. Because it's vital. It's vital for all of us. For every last one of us. I'm going to make this announcement. And I want you guys to believe God for this. With me. By next year. I want to have a church. And I want to have a church where I can minister. I want to be the lead preacher. I want to be the head pastor at that church. I want to move this ministry to a church. I don't have the funding for it. I don't have any idea where this building is. But I'm believing God for it. And I ask you to believe him with me. That he will bring forth a church. Where we can reach out to more people. To more communities. To go farther with this. To do the will of of the Lord. Thank you in advance for praying and believing God with me. I will see you guys next week. We're going to, I'm going to do the same thing for every chapter in John. But I'm going to only do two weeks worth on every time. On chapter two, I'm going to do half of the Half of the chapter one week, and then the other half the other week. Tune in for both those weeks, and then we're going to be right back here. I'm going to talk to you guys, digest it with you guys, and we'll go farther with it. Thank you for listening to the sermon, watching this teaching, and understanding with me just why that first verse of chapter 1 of John is so important. I'll see you guys next week. And, uh, yeah. Please believe God with me for this church. I need your, I need your prayer. I need your help. Because God, God listens. See you guys next week.